Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas from Duran Customs. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone for the continued support, viewers and subscribers, and thank you to all the great guests that have stopped by Duran Customs. I put together a year in review, a recap of some clips of this year. I hope you all will enjoy. Thank you. I am grateful to you all. Looking forward to a tremendous new year in 2022. We got some great guests lined up. Also, check out the online store at DuranCustoms.com for lots of great merch, from CDs to vinyl records and collectibles. Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas from Duran Customs. How you doing, my brother? Can you hear me? How's it going? Can you hear me, brother? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, there we go. There we there go. There we go. <laughs> we got Ball and Zone. Homegrown. DJ M1 in the motherfucking building right now, brother. Man, what's up? What's thank up? Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. Yeah, no here, problem. Brother. Thank you for the invite, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. This guy's like family, man. You know? Been here for knowing you for so many years and you've been putting uh putting in work for over 26 years, man. I would say about 26 years in this game, right? Just about, yeah, yeah a bit over. Your name in itself, brother. DJ M1, brother. DJ M1, that's like the elements of, you know, hip hop in itself, brother. Yeah. You got KRS One, brother. Then you got DJ M1. Yeah. Graffiti, breakdance, hip hop, and music, brother. Turntablism, brother. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you know Mr. M1, but uh, if you're going to Duran Customs, if you're going to my YouTube, that mix that you did is right up there. So when people click onto that, your mix of my music comes up there, brother. Oh yeah, yeah. That and was like a, that, that was like that, a that, test that. we did. In, yeah, it was in, like a test. And you know did what? Did it in the room? <laughs> yeah, hey bro. But what you told me just kind of like I've never thought of it the way that a DJ thinks of it. When you said, "Hey, I had to reloop it and make sure it was on point," you know that all everything was. I was like, "Whoa, man." just threw me for a whole nother you don't know uh well me not knowing the steps it takes to be a dj dude a lot of people think it's just the music but you have to know the music and you were saying the clap words of one two three right going with the, the beat standard, and everything standard bar. It in. yeah yeah, standard there bars. You go. yeah man dude you just blow my it, it's an instrument brother it's a, yeah, instrument. a little bit it takes music a little bit of music knowledge not too much but your standard music learning uh beats per minute learning your bars and and you know and, and, and your hi-hats and all that when when oh. what comes in how long and and stuff yeah. like that your measures and stuff hey, but just, just basic average, very basic stuff just the average joke can't do that brother I no wish not I, really i want to still learn brother i'm gonna take a little shot in your honor brother <laughs> oh man yeah go ahead man. i, I wish you were By here man <laughs> That's a good fella cup. Right, sir. All right, there you go. <laughs> and uh, uh, I was looking for my shot glass, but my, I think my fucking son, he, he took it, brother. I don't know. Right, I can't right. find it, brother. <laughs> there you go, man. That's for that's for Joe Panay, man. OG, old, old OG, dude, a Joe Panay, Park. brother. Joe Panay, right what? there. Joe Panay, yeah, rest in peace, my brother. So, Moen, brother. Yeah. I remember when you guys used to ball, bro. Both of you guys going head to head yeah. at Holland, man. He was he was my main competition playing back and forth basketball, man. Like he made me want to be better. I was just a little chunky kid, and and watching him play I was like, man, that, if he can move like that, the way he moves, and he used to drag that leg across, you know, to make yeah. people jump, man. We're here with Chaff underscore seventy four, the Artis, Mr. Carlos Duran. Thank you for taking the time to be here with Durant's Custom Interviews, my brother. We're going to title this, these uh, interviews, the Zoom Boom Room or something. You know? Yeah, yeah, How are you yeah. going, my brother? All right. Good, man. Thank you. I'm glad you're here for having me on, man. Much appreciated. 
You're welcome and well deserved, my brother. And when I say my brother, I literally mean my brother, one half my of most yeah. prophetic poets, Mr. Yeah. Chaplin. Yeah, Chaplin. Yeah. I want to yeah. um, talk about your 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 artistry back there, your, the penmanship. What was it that inspired you as a young kid to pick up the the pencil? To say, hey, this is something that I want to pursue and become, you know, and follow your passion as an artist. Because as I could look in back of you, man, it's extensive and it's all across the board, man. It's amazing. Yeah. What was I it? Try to... Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I try to just touch bases, like you said, going across the board, just uh, on everything, you know. Yeah, just... yeah. Because yeah. it's not. It's it's music. It's wrestling it's native american and later yes. on we'll get into other things that you 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 tapped into you know besides the the penmanship and the canvas work but what was it that sparked that um fire inside you as a kid that made you say you wanted to pursue this you know as a passion I think of the first back that I can remember is, is being small is uh, just uh, I remember my our older brother just um, him um, doodling and uh, drawing and messing around you know with those sketchbooks and stuff. Yeah. So I remember you know being little, probably like five or four years old, just run, running over there and as he was laid out right there, just you wow. know, just observing. Just being an observer to that and, and witnessing that, right? I remember he used to draw like Batman and all that stuff, man. Like, you know? Batman, then, yeah, I, you know, just like a little kid throw a dog, you know? Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Like, so that so built yeah. that, that built the excitement and the anticipation inside you to say, hey, this is the way I want to follow my passion. There you go. You, when you just said that, 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 that built that excitement right there that lit the flame right there and you know i, I could just remember just uh, uh going through the years there's always been just family members that runs in the family just always um, doing artwork and stuff and i remember uh, emma's boys and stuff well we lived in hp then yeah, you know, our aunt right yeah our aunt you know i and and hit him and even um um our cousin her you know her sketching and all that doing um pencil work and everything and just being excited and stuff you know and even saving their artwork that they did you know yes. me get and, and saving it and you know you trying to replicate it and stuff and for me yeah. it was just amazing to see that from them creating you know for, from from nothing you know so it was, it was awesome yes and then that whole overwhelming feeling i mean Ooh, of it coming to life, how did you right? do it? How did you do it? To to say, life, that's beautiful. How did you do it? Like, no, nah, bro, I didn't do it. I just recreated it. That's what it works. You know what I'm saying. So that's how it really works. You added your little touch. Yeah, free, to it. free is free. You have freedom. There's so much freedom you have in it. You know yeah. Saying? Nobody, there's nobody there to tell you no. And how you you were saying that the the different colors, like with the comic books, that make everything pop with it, right? Okay. The warm colors, the light colors, the heavy colors. You know. Man, bro. Like I said, I got I got a lot of artists that like, I fool around with and stuff like that. And they still, like I said, Al Sandoval's one. Uh, Eddie DeWart, there's another one you might know. Remember back in the days, I yeah. still got him. Um, then like a few others, you know what I'm saying? Wow. A few others. Man, I can yeah, keep bro. naming them, naming them on, but it's like, you know, I ain't you gotta do a one of that, you know, house music and all that, brother. Oh, that's, my, that's my brother right there, man. Yeah. DJ M1, man. I got the Jack Daniels today, brother. I'm gonna take a shot in your honor, brother. Me too, my boy. I just had a bottle of Jack, about a half a bottle. Wow. Right That's here, good. check it out. You know we got him, my oh, boy. We got it, brother. We got it right there. Shout out to Sick Jack and Psycho Realm Family. That's his drink right there. Bottle oh, of day. Wow. Away. Yeah, hell yeah, brother. Brother. So, in your early days, man, I remember you and M's. At the bowling alley, man. At the pool house, putting it down. Shooters Club, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Definitely. Talk to us about what what was it in your early days, man? Let's say as a kid that navigated you, that propelled you towards music. 
What was it around you in your surroundings, bro, that, that you know, you gravitated to that, brother? Right, right, right. And well, back in those days, house music was the thing. You know, party music was the thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. My brother Ems was the, the biggest inspiration there. You know what I'm saying? Like, man. Yeah, you know, we go to like, you know, Exodus and World Records and any record store we could. Wow. We'd get all those old, that old wax. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what you're talking you're about. You're talking that. about records, bro. You ain't talking about downloads and none of this shit right now, bro. You're talking <laughs> about vinyl records itself. Yeah, no, we used to suffer for our music, man. We used to have to carry wax, you know, go places wow. early in the morning, you know, to collect wax. Yeah. yeah wow, man. man that, that, thanks, man. That's amazing, brother. That's amazing. What are what are also some of your early influence in, in DJing? When we're talking about DJing in itself, brother, whether it's DJ Aladdin, Egyptian right Lover, DJ Ralph yeah. M, or Tony G, brother, who, who are some of, besides, of course, M's, man, right, because right. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all of them, all of our, all of our homies were talented, man. I got you know. Um, matter of fact, where is my phone? Oh, you're on my phone. Yeah. Um. You know, all our, all our homies were inspirational, man. My boy Peep Show and his crew, you know, the Turntable uh, Symphonic Orchestra. Wow. Uh, you know, like Mike Boogie Excess and D Styles from the Pickles, you know. Wow, like, they brother. got a big thing going on right now, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah. and just all of our homies, man. My boy Shotgun, you know, Goody Mob. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, all of our homies, Gargamel and just all yeah. of our local homies, La Rock and... You kind of you, you were surrounded by that then, man. You were kind oh, yeah, of yeah, yeah. by your surroundings. LA, LA had one of the dopest battle circuits. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like if you were in LA and you were competing, it's like yeah. you know you had some talent to just kind of get into the guitar centers and the Sam Ashes and all that. You know so those DJs, you know, went on to battle like ITF and DMC, some of the biggest battles in the world. You know, you took my next question right out of my mouth, bro. That's what I was gonna tell you next. What was it like participating in those early guitar center battles there, brother? Because oh, I've seen some of the videos that you've been putting <laughs> yeah. up on, on your YouTube, yeah. man. Hey, dude, you guys were fucking it up way back then, brother. Putting it down, both of you. And yeah. then more or less, that one that you showed, I don't know if it was at the guitar center, but it was you and, and um, it was you and M saying both of you guys yeah. are in sync. Just cutting it up right there. Hey, go off of this band, dude. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. about 50, 20 years ago, brother. Oh, yeah. That was intense, man. That's, uh, that was seriously intense, man. That was some heavy competition. Phonics and, you know, Aslan, Petrix, all those guys. Those guys are, you know, multi-talented. They were the... And innovative. that was a that was an annual thing, right? The, the oh, yeah. It happened every year. Yeah. yeah, it happened every year, yeah. World Records and... Yes, yeah, there you go, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. It fades in and then it fades yeah. out. It's like whoa. Yeah, it's it's and you can tell you you can, you can tell, tell it's a rhythm. It's a rhythm you know, you know, exactly. and, and I think I mentioned this to you before. Um, listening to his production, yeah. bro, especially yeah. on the double album of the Wu Tang. Oh yeah, the W. I mean, they're using just like you know pieces of a movie where you don't think it would fit in, oh. in a song, and it's like in the middle exactly. while they're rapping, and it's like. They kind yeah, of bro, blend everything bro. blends yeah, into just, just like, <laughs> yeah. man, dude, it's yeah, just bro, that's raw cool. that's, and uncut, bro. That's, 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 and raw and uncut, bro. And I think RZA was a genius for that, bro. Like, yeah. When he did all the Wu Tang albums, he always had the karate flicks in the background and everything. Yes, bro. And Probably Muggs and RZA definitely were not my two best, best producers, producers in the hip hop game. Definitely right? kind of go hand in hand. Hand in hand, exactly. So he's like a uh, um, Muggs is like man, dude. I just I think know, Muggs, though, bro, to be yes. honest, to be 100% yes. honest, I think Muggs sound, though, is a little crispier and clean, cleaner than the RZA, bro. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because RZA has that dirty kind of... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Raw, 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 like raw just, hey, here it is. Like, here it is. Here it is. Yeah. Exactly, bro. And, and, and Muggs, it's a little bit more cleaned it's up. It's more cleaned up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. their styles are definitely... Uh, hand in hand, brother. Hand in hand, bro. Yeah, yeah. 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 To let it marinate for future generations. And here and we, we are, bro. We got to adjust to it. We are yeah. talking, talking baseball, baseball cards, man. Hell yeah, man. That's so, it, man. <laughs> what? what <laughs> That's I, you it, know, man. I could so, relate, bro. Not as far as, uh, let's say, as uh, collecting baseball cards, but I would uh, collect football cards, bro. And I would say early 90s in junior high, 
I would get them at Gen Sense and then I would get like the pro, uh, pro set score. And, but I think they overpopulated I re- that. I remember, I remember Gen Sense, man. Yes. And then um, I remember my I remember, friend. I gave, remember Gen Sense, man. Gave me a pack of old school tops, um, football cards, bro. And I, I have a, still a lot of them, bro. I remember I had a freaking Joe Montana's rookie card, bro. And I traded it to this guy named Clumsy Gilbert. I don't know if you remember him. For, uh, yes, uh, I do. <laughs> uh, for uh, uh, Emmett Smith rookie card, one of I think a uh, two hundred. You, 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 you trade you traded him for 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 Al Bundy's rookie card. Oh, or Al Bundy's rookie card, bro. Shoot. From everyone children, brother, and I like that. So Clumsy, <laughs> you're off there. Whole guy. I want my card back. But believe this or not, bro. I shook Joe Montana's hand at Frankenstein, man. I shook his hand. I got to meet him one time. We went over there, me and my brother, and we saw him. We were all raided out. He looked at us like, man, what the hell? <laughs> but we got to meet him. <laughs> brother, take us Yo, to the... Yeah, that's... yeah. Joe Montana is one of the greatest. And, you know, speaking of Joe Montana... Yes. Already passed. You know? yeah. I saw everybody playing with him and taking all this shit. Yeah. To, you know, trying to patch it all together. Yeah. Then we had uh, number six. It's on, dude. What yeah. movie? They had a little movie sample on there. Yeah, what, what? yeah. I'm trying to think of that one. Yeah. We're talking about it. Haven't hit, hasn't hit me yet. Flatliners, right? bro. Remember that? Flat, that was, was a fucking dope dude, movie. Dude, I knew it was like, when it was like dude, see, was I was the, thinking of Butterfly Effect in my mind. Okay, I'm saying, yeah, you know, Butterfly Effect got that kind of music. Yeah. Fucking, uh, yeah, Flatliners. That was a lot of good I'm trying to think of the act. There was a lot of good actors on there, dude. I'm just trying to. I forget, bro, but man, that was a fucking badass. Movie. I want to say Kevin Bacon. Yeah, Kevin Bacon. Kevin yeah. Bacon was, was in there. The, the female. Though, yeah, right? that's what I was thinking of her now. Julia Dude. Roberts, no? Uh, was it Julia Roberts? I think oh, Julia Roberts shit, is out yeah. there. I'm not there's sure about two. that one. Yeah, there's yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that movie yeah. got pretty crazy. I can tell you, I think Kevin Bacon's in that for sure. Because he made those kind of movies. Oh, back Kevin Bacon. Yeah, yeah. He bro, made those kind of movies and shit. It starts off, today's a good day to die. Uh, then right after, right after that, he was calling out fucking Dr. Dre and Snoop, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. No, he took his shots, bro, I tell you. He talking about shot. beating up Do- um, D. Barnes and then calling um, Dr. Dre, Rip Van Winkle. Yeah. <laughs> was, it, was that Vanilla Ice? Or? Yeah, was Vanilla Ice, yeah. He's calling up Vanilla, Vanilla Ice, bro. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, like you said, he didn't have a producer at the time. He just had uh, DJ Yellow. And then, like I said, all his really producing skills was with Dre. Out of the well, I heard that after Dre had left around that time, he was trying to get quick because he had penthouse oh, players came. Oh, okay, okay. You remember that one with AMG and all them? And yeah, AMG yeah, yeah, yeah. comes out in a couple of... Yeah, 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 I think yeah, he was those. trying to get quick over there as his main producer. But he had Hutch. He yeah, had yeah. Hutch, too, dude. Fucking Big Hutch, Code 187 was fucking dope. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, if Easy he wouldn't have died for... And I heard that... At that time, in 1995, he was going to do, like, a video game and all that. Oh, so shit. At, at that time, dude. Yeah. He would have had, like, a Grand Theft Auto with him on there, you know? He was, like, one of the... His vision was fucking above That's one beyond. of the things that people got... The popular one, man. You got to chill. Mm-hmm. It's my thing. You're a customer. The Steve Martin, Get Off the Bandwagon, DJ Kayla Boss, and Jane. Ten songs, but that yeah. was a and back then. That was, yeah, that was a lot, back, right? Back, back then, that was the lineup. They really didn't have too many, you know, songs on there. What ten or twelve was? Yeah, yeah. Was, was it. the max yeah, on that at that max. time? Yeah. Wow, oh, yeah. classic album, man. And, and we can't forget about Rakim, man. Painted for that was a classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, the reason one of this one is the first one to us to interview because it had a lot of impact in our lives. In our man. lives, man. I mean, Definitely. this was something that was banging at the house parties, man. That banging was, in, the, in the house parties and in the cars, and man. In the cars, man. <laughs> and in the cars. And in the cars. And the V-dubs and the Paulas and the I, trucks. <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, our brother was always playing that jam. That was, oh. that, was, that, was, that, was that, man. That was... Along with the Slick Rick, the children's story, man, oh, man. and all that, man. That was a, that was a classic yeah. album, man. We too, definitely man. grew up in one of the best eras of hip-hop, man. It was just and open you know up. What, man? Yeah, when you're saying that, dude, I just had this rush of just this feeling of a more of like nostalgia, bro. Right? Nostalgia, nostalgia, brother. Nostalgia. Like, I mean, you, yeah. you're not lying, dude, when you say that, brother. You definitely, man. And it was that that led into us.
know, they were, they were. You got to chill, bro. Yeah, they, they were East Coast, right? And yeah. I think later on with Bad Boy trying to replicate with us, trying to, trying to get that gangster vibe and stuff, like, you know, what Death Row had. Yeah. But these guys had already accomplished that vibe back then. Really with the, with the, they had the um, Roger and Zap, you know, yeah. that, that was the, you know, what yeah. they sampled, man. That oh, was all East, uh, West, West Coast, Coast stuff, man. Yeah. Th- they kind of, um, crossed over the fan base from the west coast because i think a lot of the early influence on the rappers out here love that about them man yeah. oh we yeah we're talking about mc8 so, i think they love the fact that epmd mm. brought that funk out and used what you're talking about the zap and yeah. roger and, and later on in their other albums they used a lot of zap and roger and i remember over. yeah i remember eric per- uh, um, paris was uh speaking about yeah. you know what how his father influenced them and was always playing that man, playing that that funk, man. The funk, you know so, you know, to, to me, then they had that that gangster vibe. That and gangster vibe, man. Yeah. That's the thing that, that people try to you know get get to all the time. And then we were talking about Freddie Fender. What was his? Uh, he went by uh, well, he had, other other. Well, he had three. He had three names. Three under, names, right? Uh, Freddie Before we move on to further things, out you know, because that's a pretty great topic, you know, like there that I was, you know, yeah, we yeah, had first, first that name, you shocked me yeah, with, you know. His first name was Jerry Glenn. Jerry Glenn. Jerry wow. Glenn. Okay, his second name was Scotty Wayne. Wow. And he, he started off, right? With Jerry, you... with Jerry Glenn. Yeah, he yeah. started and off. And he also went on to be part of the Texas Tornadoes doing Texans in his later right. years. Well, you know? in his later years, he he, uh, he got really popular over there in, in Texas. Over there in Texas. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and the thing is, like, you know, in, in Texas, you know, you had, you had a lot of these good Tejano groups, you know, like Sonny and the Sunliners and... Um, and Selena, that we, that's where we, <laughs> we started off the conversation with, like... Tex-Mex, brother, that reminds me of my dad, bro, Tex-Mex, you know, the Texas Tornadoes, Freddie Fender, what reminds you of your parents, talk about doo-wops that you remember from growing up in Baltimore Park, well, Well, the first doo-wop song, of what reminds you of your your mom and your dad, well, the first doo-wop song I I heard was uh, Earth Angel by the Penguins, when I first heard of that song, I, I, you know, I deeply was just like, you know, listening to the lyrics of how, you know, yeah, how touching oh, it grabbed I'm you, touching, gravitated I'm, to no, the listeners. Touching, I'm touching r and Yes, yeah, so. This was like, kind of, I, I want to say that this was the very first birth of, of soul. Of, yes. Of, 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 the, of the, the R&B to walk. Yes, yes. Yeah. But then, um, talking about uh, Frank Zappa, uh, to make that story short, um, he did back them up on, on uh, Earth Angel and um, Memories of Paul Mami. Wow. Believe it or not. And Memories of Almani was a later record in 1960. Okay, yes. that released on, on original sound, and his name was put on there on the bottom of the record. Friend Zappa. Yeah, Zappa. Yeah. Zappa. And that that freaked me out because I mean because in the late 60s he was already doing you know a lot of these creativity funny wacky things you know like yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know a lot of it, uh, you know stupidity stuff you know? yeah but, yeah you know he got into this comedy thing. Yeah, later, but, but you know, we we never we will never know that if we don't do our history and our research like the way you have. You know, you you're, you're doing your research and you're knowing this. The average person that lis- listens to music, that's why I think it's so important to. I want. I was looking forward well, to doing you know, this the, the interview thing is, the thing is it's, for it's, people it's, to know things like this. It's important. It's important to, to own the, the, the original vinyls. That way, you, you know who the composers are. Yes, yes. You know who the, the, the main artists. Hey, you're right. Uh, you're talking about the original. Right. Stuff in the we music that came out. That way they don't change it up later on if they sell it to another record company and so on, correct? Right. Uh, Watching my, my first event that I ever seen at the Ground Olympic was yeah. Roben Olivares wow. versus Alexis Arguello, which turned out to be a freaking two round knockout. You want wow. you, you want to hear about being thrown in the sky and you know, water <laughs> wow, cups, right? you know, Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and the way to make to get people, you know, yeah. react to. You know? So yeah, yeah. So so that that's then what made it fun. You know, that take back the day. I didn't know. I didn't know about Lucha Libre until like a week after. My yeah. uncle said, "Let's go." I think it was a dollar fifty for chick for kids. So I was like, so he took all his kids and me and my cousin, and then. Um, Dude, we went every Friday, man. You got to see the same people every day. The same people that would watch this. Pro- it made so the, the fans, there was like the, the 
routine fans that would go over there and watch every Friday. And we all thought it was real, bro. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was real, it's kind of like at the uh, night in Columbus. Night in Columbus. Yeah, yeah they were seen you there, not too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I see you guys there. Yeah. yeah, my friend Jesse, man, which probably this would be the interview. This is what you're doing. You're the interview and exit. He was actually wrestled at the Grand Olympic California, brother, was trained at a great delight. Hey, dude, I, I think our first thing of, of seeing a, a, a wrestling ring, right, if you don't, if you remember, was at the Salt Lake Park. I was probably like seven, eight years old, and my mom was walking us through the park, and all the kids were in the, in the ring row, and me and Carlos were there, and I remember touching it, like, oh, this, this is the uh, natural ring that they wrestled in. Was it bouncing? Wow, oh, no, <laughs> bro, that was the one. hard as fuck, bro. Literally got in it. Yeah, yeah, I remember, really? like, oh, man, and it just grew from there, bro. That's a... What other great matches do you do you remember? Man, I remember like one of the, one of the match. I mean, you remember the Guerrero family, Mondo, yes, Hector, Chavo. Chavo Guerrero, Chavo was big, Freddie Blassie, um, Roddy of Piper. course, Roddy Roddy Piper, dude. I remember like you, you guys probably heard this story, dude, like a million times. And I was I was there in one of them, dude. I remember it was my, my uncle Manuel, my cousin Fernando, my cousin Tony, and his brother Baco, and of course the mom, no yeah. kids, dude. And I remember like um, they say please stand stand up. Uh, you know, Rowdy Rowdy Piper sings the Nash Mexican national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> and if I know Rowdy Rowdy Piper, he, the did, way it <laughs> he did it. He did it. He did it with the bagpipes, but he sang like Ucaracha. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That was cold, bro. I heard that story before. He brought, I, I was, he, it wasn't the first because he was taking that around town. Yeah, 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 he, yeah, he, yeah. He was making money with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, slang on pigs at him. And then, well, this is what I heard. He got stabbed. I heard he got stabbed. Oh, no, so, no. Uh, yeah, Louis. That's the Louis. Louis. That's the King Twin. That's King Twin. There it is. Oh yeah. Hey, and I, let me tell you something. The the music critics that they have this compilation, they love it. Yeah. The boss boss. You would you wouldn't think somebody like me, somebody like me, would like this type of stuff. I I've dug I've dug this stuff since since the eighties. So I mean, you got a lot of dimensions for you, brother. <laughs> Pop too, huh? Pop is like a dance? Oh, huh? Kind of like Kind of has a dance, little bit of dance moves in it. Yeah. But it's got that punkish, you know, grunge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Man, and all this time I thought you were just about old and so, man. I didn't know there was another level of dimensions in you, brother. Well, there's a whole, there's a whole lot more to it. <laughs> so what do you think? Psychedelic rock? Psych pump? So how would you garage? Garage, grunge, punk? Underground? So, well, a lot of this music was considered underground after, yeah. you know, after I almost want to play that Kingsman. Play it. Then you can play it. Uh. Now, of course, that was a popular one. Yeah, it's, a, it's always been a popular one. Man, that's cool. Didn't it come out in Animal House, too? That movie, Animal House? Animal House. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
trying not to drink, but you're tempting me with this great music to open up a beer, man. I'm trying not to, <laughs> brother. Well, coffee right here. So, um, at that point, from um, what are some of your favorites in, let's say, rock or in country, brother? So in country, well, I think it's very fitting the shirt I have on. Johnny today. Cash, brother. Johnny shoot. Cash. I do have Johnny Cash's name on my knuckles. I don't know. Uh, if you can that. That's that's I, not. I, I What's your favorite Johnny name? Cash song? Man, there's so many. There's but... just so many. There's so many. I, I love, love you one could... piece at a time. Yeah. I love one piece at a <laughs> time. How about Cocaine Blues? Or was, was that absolutely? A little... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a absolutely. Nice, I got that Johnny Cash vinyl off there. Will you be dropping any vinyl for your music anytime soon? Man, I've looked at that. I I have been kind it's of it's pricey more. though. Yeah, yeah. I've I've kind of been more going in the uh, dropping singles to yeah. the streaming services. You know, Spotify and iTunes is is what's rolling the game. And yes, uh, yes. I have a lot of friends here in Nashville who are a lot smarter than me. In the music business, and I take a lot of their advice on a lot of things, and and yeah. the uh, the streaming services are king right now. Oh yeah, so that that's kind of the medium that I have been working through. Is yes, the, have you tried Bandicam too? Bandicam or Bandcamp? I have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's also a down a downloading stream where they could purchase your music. Nice. So for, yeah, from singing to playing the guitar. Take us through the process of you. You're saying that you write your own songs too. How did that start? Yes. Did it start off writing poetry and then you converting that poetry into songwriting and stuff like that? How does that process go for so you? So, what's oh, how wild. did it start? Yes. The truth is, is, I'm gonna say it's my family, bro. My family, my wife, my team is, is my big motivation because. They, they look up to me, you know what I mean? And, and they and they depend on me and, and they support me so much, you know what I'm saying? And and that in return, I, I you know, I don't want to let them down, bro. So I'm, I'm working That's to build this network. Right, yeah, it's definitely my foundation. I mean, you can't build a house without it, you know what yes, I mean? Yes, yes. So with that being said, it, it, they're, they're my motivation, you know what yes. I mean? To get up in the morning, to know that I'm doing this for them, and not only that, for doing it for my artists and my team that believe in me to get the music out, to continue growing and building, yes, you know what yes. I mean? That, that continues. Leaving your legs. What was it um, specifically about hip hop that pulled you in and grabbed your attention, brother? What was it about about hip hop? Well, uh, when I was ten is when I fell in love with rap and then hip hop culture, and basically I loved the music because, interestingly enough, I really felt like I could identify with it. My friend Tom Early had made me a tape. I went to elementary school with him. Yes. When I was around ten, I asked him about. I said, "Hey, man." Have you heard any of this rap stuff? And uh, I kind of like what I heard. Is there any more of it? He's like, dude, there's a lot of rap. I was like, really? Wow. So he made me a tape. And on the tape, it was uh, Nightmares by Dana Dane. Wow. It was uh, Big Mouth by Houdini, You Talk Too Much, mm -hmm. Run the MC, Roxanne, Roxanne, UTFO, The Show by yeah, yeah. Uh, Dougie Fresh and see Ricky D and the Get Fresh crew. So there were all these stories. Yeah, yeah. And then I was big into playing basketball. So there was Basketball by Curtis Blood was on there. So these wow. songs, I could identify with liking a girl and her not liking me, like Roxanne, Roxanne. I could identify mm -hmm. with playing basketball with Curtis Blow. I could identify with having a nightmare like Dana Dane described. Dana yeah. Dane, man. Weren't so, they all in the group, Slick Rick, Dana Dane, in, in high school or something like that? Right? Yeah, they, they were in the Kango crew together. Kango crew, right? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, so I loved all that. And then I also... I didn't understand this till later about myself, but I've always been very drawn to percussion. So I really like drums. And in that time of 1985, 86, 84, 83, most of the music that was being made was largely drum driven. Yeah. And then I liked the sound of scratching. So it was all this stuff. And then I also didn't like and didn't feel connected to or that I could relate to a lot of the rock music that was going on that some of my white friends were listening to or that mm. I would see we didn't have a cable at the time, but when I go to my friend's house, if they were playing MTV or something, I didn't like, I, I liked it, but I wasn't like gung-ho about it. So when I heard rap, I was like, this is it. What are some of Mellow Man Ace's favorite artists, whether it be in soul, funk, hip-hop, or rock, brother? What are some of your favorite poets? 
uh, back man, into of course, man. Curtis Mayfield. For future generations, uh, see. I love Curtis Mayfield. The Isley Brothers, the Brothers Johnson, uh, a lot of the family groups, right. uh, you know, the Jackson how about, Five. How about the Five uh, Stair Steps? No, I wasn't, I wasn't into it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but most of, a lot of the family groups yes. was my thing. And so I learned there that when I got on to bring my family with me, so Sendar was my hype man, yes. and my two sisters were my backup dancers, and, and, the, and the girl who played Mentirosa in the video was my little sister. Wow. So, I knew that. Damn, yeah, it was, cool. you know, you had Sister Sledge, you had uh, the Jets, a lot of family groups, you know, the oh. Isley Brothers. That's Those cool. were groups that, you know, so I that, really that's why it, it meant a lot to you, and that's why you did that. You incorporated them in earlier on. Yeah, and, and I mean, you can, you can see old footage, you know, vintage, classic, whatever you want to call it, footage. Yeah. Like on the Arsenio Hall show, it's Send Dog, myself, my two sisters, and Julio G. Wow. You know, and, and that to me means a lot, man. It meant a lot. And so, even to Family. this day, my son has been my DJ for the last 10, 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Is he, so, al is he also doing some of your produ your production on, yeah, on your albums yeah. and stuff? Yeah, yeah oh, absolutely. Dope, that's yeah. Cool. Talk to. Talk to us about your ventures into creating your own wine, Havana Wines, brother. Oh man, yeah, that was that was and is probably one of the hardest endeavors I ever embarked on. You know what I mean? Because yes. um, when you're doing something that can, you know, possibly really have the possibility of being or becoming like a Fortune 500 company, you know, it's it's a bigger deal and it takes a lot of finances. Yes. Uh, so. I, I just got creative with my finances and I moved some things around. I was able to move some things around yes. and um, and put it together. Uh, I tasted all the blends before actually bottling them, you know, wow. making sure that I got the flavors that, that, were, that I like for me because yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't know that in 2017, I had a heart attack, right? And so wow. my, yeah, so my doctor, my doctor said, you should, you know, if you're going to drink from now on, it should be wine. Like, and, and I said, damn, no more, you know, Patron Silver, you know, Man. tequila, fucking rum. You I'm know? glad you're telling me that, brother. I'm not going to drink tequila no more, man. Yeah. <laughs> nah, start man. drinking oh. some wine, brother. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's why I went and, and finally, you know, during COVID even, there mm. were some people who were still working and, yeah. and willing to work. Yes. And we were able to put the blends uh, together, um, and a lot of trips back and forth to Napa Valley and, and things of that nature that took place. Yes. And you know, and, and like I said, hardworking people who were still willing to work with the pandemic. Yes. And lo and behold, here we are, Havana Wines. You know, absolutely. Uh, for brother. those who. his name yes. that's far 1580 a.m. Yep. k.d.a.y you guys start <laughs> you guys were there right earlier yeah. on you guys would do the the mixes the traffic the mixes jam. right oh yeah very early on you and you and Dre. that oh, was yeah, prior definitely. to you guys doing the rhodium mixtapes too right Correct? yeah yeah so you guys were all part of that doing oh yeah we did we was first at all that stuff <laughs> And the NWA in the early days, let's say making those uh, that straight out of Compton album, mm -hmm. who was NWA listening to? Who was on constant rotation for NWA? The guys back then making that album. Who, who were you guys? You know, listening. Yeah, I don't want to say inspired because you guys were doing the inspiring. I want to say who did you guys listen to? You know what I'm saying? Like, well. I mean, it had to be the George Clintons and all that stuff. Yeah. The funk. It had to be yeah. the funk back then. Yeah. Were you guys yeah. listening to like EPND, though? Stuff like I mean, that that was out at that time? Big Daddy came really, back in? We was just doing our own style, our own thing. Yeah. But we, I mean, I mean, of course we listened to the Run DMC. The Run DMC. Them, Houdini you, and all that. Oh, Houdini. Wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, all, you know, fun. all that from that Rock Him, Eric right. B, Rock yeah. you know, all that stuff. So. Wow. Awesome, brother. Awesome, man. So how was it like creating that historic and classic album straight out of Compton? What was, 
What was your favorite track on that? Um, my favorite track was Compton in the House. Compton I don't know why. In the house. It was one of the older ones we had did the remix for yeah, the yeah. album. Yes. But that was my favorite. I don't know why. It, <laughs> that's kind of like a Run DMC style flowing back and forth. Jay yeah. and Ren, right? Yeah, going that back was and a forth. more older style. Yeah, definitely. yeah, yeah. That was dope. When they yeah. rap it together, then they yes. go back and forth. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then there was one, too, right? I believe on Easy Does It album, Easy's first album was Two Hard Mo Brothers. Yeah. Two, and you played the drums on that, if I'm, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah, I played the drums on that one. Yeah. What was it that, you, what do you think that made that first NWA album so great and historic? Was it the creativity production wise or was it the message, gangster, reality rap or all of that put together, that rawness? What do you I think, think it was, looking back? I think it was just different yes. from everybody that was out. All the Run DMCs, all the LA, you know, we were just totally different. Uh -huh. Totally different sound, and we talked about a different subject. Yes. You know, they talked about, you know, happy stuff or whatever they talked about. Yes. We talked about when we opened our front door, that's what we talked about, the streets. Yes. And the thing about it, them streets are all over the world. Yes. Every city has a ghetto somewhere. Wow. You know, and, and the people in the ghetto can relate. But then it started crossing over and the suburbs started yes. hearing. That's what just took it off. But it was it was just, I guess because we were different. That we were wow. so different from everybody. You and know, you guys raw. Were, yeah. It was raw, you know. Yeah, raw and uncut, man. Oh yeah. You guys oh, weren't yeah. afraid to push that that boundary. Oh yeah. It, tell us about the places you have traveled to, you know, and the people know the music all over the road. Well, even I traveled more i travel now djing wow. more than nwa did shows wow. i travel all the world i don't been around the world so nwa only been to london one time now. oh wow yeah so but as i dj now yes. days but not since the pandemic you know just too much yes. going on but i dj from korea to vietnam to wow. Bali, sri lanka australia london europe i mean wow all over europe that's amazing, man. Helsinki, all kind of wow. places. But when I DJ, I only play late 80s and early 90s. Wow. That's all I play. And around the world, like our old hip hop. 